Uh, my name is Sean Darrington, uh, product manager here on the, in our storage uh, group here at Google Cloud. It's great to be back at uh, Cloud Field Day. This is, I think, my ninth uh, Field Day event. Uh, Stephen and I actually did the very first one back in 2009 uh, with 3 par and Veritas Semantic, and so this is uh, it's great to see a lot of familiar faces from prior uh, Field Days and so forth. So we have a uh, as imagine, as is always go, we're running a little bit behind schedule, so we're going to try to make up a little bit of time here. I wanted to talk about storage in the context of different workloads, and Jeff set this up a little bit earlier this morning. So, um, Ray, one of the things about losing control of storage, this is one of the things that you'll see, and we get a lot of questions about, it doesn't work that way on-premises, why is it working? I want that knob to turn. Um, so what we've done is we've been thinking about storage, obviously, for a long time, but we've been thinking about how to improve customers running AI and ML workloads. A lot of the same challenges and solutions are there, whether it be file, block, et cetera, but there are different requirements for AI and ML applications compared to databases and traditional workloads in GKE. And so what we've been busy over the last year and a half is optimizing a lot of our storage solutions for AI and ML workloads to allow customers to achieve this vision. And there are a couple of things in here that are important. Number one, access anywhere. We want to provide customers the ability to get the data and store the data in any region within a continent and move that data as close to the GPU, TPU resources as possible. We want to give them the ability to scale performance from gigabytes per second of throughput to terabits per second of throughput based upon what they're trying to do, as well as use the interface they need. Most of them are going to be using file, but not everybody. So how do you adapt an object store to handle file interfaces? Uh, and then also any scale from gigabytes to petabytes or even exabytes in scale, we want to give customers that ability to choose what and how they want to train their models. This is a, you'll see this later today in the AI hypercomputer. This is the collectively uh, what we're calling the AI hypercomputer from the infrastructure at the bottom. We have a session in the afternoon around GPUs and TPUs as well. Uh, but I'm not, so I'm not going to go into that, but I did want to just highlight the storage. You can see we have a variety of options based upon different needs, block, file, object, different performance levels, different file interfaces, uh, et cetera. So this up here, we're gonna cover a little bit later today. So I wanted to focus just a little bit on the storage layer. This is one of the things that we announced at Next, uh, and this is Anywhere Cache. Anywhere Cache works with our cloud storage. Uh, this is the ability to use multi-region bucket. So one of the things that we can do with cloud storage is customers don't need to worry about where they're placing the data. They have a single continental scale bucket and they can access that data, and that data is resident across different regions that we, distribute, we decide, Google decides where to actually place those objects, but from a customer's perspective, there's a single bucket that they access. However, remember the vision, getting the data access anywhere, getting the data close to the GPUs and TPUs? With Anywhere Cache, customers can now set a cache on that local compute close to the GPU and TPU, and they can cache that within a given zone within a region, and they can target multiple zones to accelerate training. So that makes it easier to get the jobs done more quickly, which if you look here, um, whoops, uh, I didn't mean to do this. This actually keeps those GPUs and TPUs running all the time instead of waiting for data to load and then you're- so You're saying you can have a multi-zone training session? Multi-zone, multi-region training session. Because people are looking for thousands or tens of thousands of GPUs and TPUs, you take them where you can get them. And, and where they cost you the least. Ideally, where they cost you the least, yes. <laughs> and so, so the idea here is you have one, your multi-region bucket is anywhere in the continent, and when you need the data, you spin up that compute, you provision a GCE or GKE resource, and you get that data close to the GPUs. I mean, look, part, of, yes. part of the problem with multi-region training is there's, there's uh, interfaces between the GPUs that have to be maintained. So as I'm going through the data or training or something like that, I have to sync up all the GPUs across these multiple regions, multiple zones, yep. stuff like that. And that's where customers use like Slurm to schedule that for GCE resources to spin up thousands, tens of thousands in sequence in a given region, and they turn on the cache and they begin to do it. So it depends on what scale, because not everybody's at that scale, right? But if you know where your data is, you don't have to use, use and, that. And the, the cache is for data, not for uh, other services. It's, it is only for the cloud storage data, yes. So for other training, we announced Parallel Store last year. This is our first parallel file system offering. Uh, this is based upon Intel Deus. So if, again, if you think about different storage requirements for training, you need sometimes 
ultra low latency, very high throughput, handles small files, right? And a parallel file system works differently than a traditional NFS uh, system, which we have with File Store, which can be used as well. Um, this is also one of the things that's integrated with cloud storage. So if you think about getting that data from anywhere, if it's in cloud storage, you want to extract a subset of that data to begin training. We're working on caching from parallel store to make it easy to extract just the data you need from cloud storage. Hyperdisk ML is our block storage offering. This is also new. We announced this uh, just the other month. This is now an option to have a volume of data accessible as read-only across thousands of hosts to accelerate data loading. And the idea here is as customers have seen on the right-hand side there, as customers are doing training, each epoch, you want to, it's going to take a certain amount of time. The trick is how do you make those epochs as short as possible to do the training as quickly as possible to do either as much or as, much, as little as you need. And so with Parallel Store, you can see it actually increases that uh, almost 4x. And that's just against a baseline of cloud storage. And, and the Anywhere Cache applies to Parallel Store, File Store, Hyperdisk, only cloud storage, only the block, cloud only the object, cloud storage. So the parallel store, it's a it's a parallel file system. You can spin that up in any region, and then that data, if you're extracting it from cloud storage, it's immediately available already because it's a file system, right? Right. It's already the the GPUs and TPUs can mount that. You can front end you can front end cloud store with parallel store. Yeah. So people extract the data that they want to train from cloud oh, storage. It's, it's, it's a data and, migration. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. And the same is true with file store. They would do the same thing. Um, in the interest of time, I'm going to skip, oops, I went back. I want to share just a quick story. So Woven by Toyota um, has been doing training uh, in Google Cloud. They've also been doing training in other uh, hyperscalers, and they've been using Lustre in others. And what they found is that as they continue to do this staging um, ray, where, where we're doing extracting data from cloud storage into a parallel file system, their storage costs were increasing because they were obviously creating copies of that, which is can be fine if you need to do that. Based upon their workload, they actually found that their costs were going up and they could use Cloud Storage Fuse. Cloud Storage Fuse from us is an open source. It's now supported by Google, but it basically allows you to mount a bucket as if it was a file system. It's not a true POSIX compliant file system, but it allows training applications that require file system access to now use a bucket. And so what they found is that they are actually able to eliminate their cost because they're not creating a second copy of that for a parallel file system in Lustre, and their training costs reduced. This is what they did for their own internal benchmark. So the top one is for Cloud Storage Fuse. And this is what we've had available for, for a long time. And you can see, again, those epochs, consistent time from the first to the second because it's going back to the bucket to get the data to train. So we introduced Cloud Storage Fuge with caching just a couple months ago. This is now GA, and this works similar to Anywhere Cache, where it begins, customers can set the amount of cache they want on each node, GPU and TPU, and so when you run that second epoch, the data's already there, or most of the data, and this is tunable again. So now that second epoch ran a 33% faster than the first one, and the third one run one that much faster than the first one as well. So again, you get this idea of decreasing the amount of training time so you can either Increase the frequency at which you do trainings. And, and, and the epoch ran faster because the cache actually had all the data rather than having to go back to the storage to yes, get it. Exactly. And you just <laughs> sucked it up from the cache. Yep. And so, so that's where they saw the 20% total training time, 33% uh, in, that, uh, in that second epoch. So that's kind of what a five minute overview about the storage uh, innovations that we've been doing with AI and ML. It's obviously not everything, but it's the, the most important, I just said the most important, it's a subset. Um, but we're obviously have a lot of customers running different workloads with enterprise and GKE workloads, right? A lot of customers are looking at this. Uh, William was just talking about our autopilot and GKE in the previous session. A lot of customers initially were doing stateless workloads uh, in GK, right? Cluster fails, that's fine, just recreate it, no big deal. They weren't even backing up any of the data. So we have backup for GKE if customers want to protect the pod and cluster configuration and or the data itself, if they start to think about persistent applications. The stateful workloads that we see running in GKE today are increasing significantly, which what we've been doing over the past couple of years is providing storage solutions that will support stateful applications. Uh, and this is one of the things that we've done uh, with, with File Store because Number one, you have access to not only thousands, but potentially tens of thousands of pods. Any cluster failover is completely transparent because all nodes are mounting an NFS 
volume and they have consistent access. Um, but we also have the option to look at ways that customers can now trade off price, performance, capacity, and availability. There are three different instance types, file source zonal, regional, and basic. They each have different characteristics. Zonal, for example, uh, provides like 26 gigabytes per second and connect, can connect to 80,000 GKE clusters or pods. These are all persistent volumes. So thinking about Terraform, making it, you know, eliminating the human error problem, right? Doing that very programmatically, you can now give customers the option to do this. And one of the things that we do with File Store Regional, thinking about the availability, is we actually replicate that data synchronously across all three zones within a given region. So if you have a deployment where you want the high availability, you want that zone failure tolerance, you can do so. All of these file store instances integrate with a CSI driver. So you can do easy, per, easy persistent volume provisioning. You can also do a backup of the single shares of that data to protect that persistent data if you'd like to. Um, and this is one of the things that from a file store perspective, we scale from you know, a terabyte to 100 terabytes. However, GKE clusters don't always want a full one terabyte amount of storage provisioned. And so what we have the option for is file store multi-share, which allows customers to provision as small as 10 gig persistent volumes and anywhere in between. And as they begin to scale that up, this will automatically grow in size. And if they want to increase those persistent volumes, it'll continue to do so. And it'll just keep adding more storage capacity as they need to. So as they provision a pod, they can just determine the characteristic of that pod and they can determine the character characteristic of the persistent volume uh, for storage. So all three of these options, file store basic, regional, and zonal, give customers the flexibility that, that was talking about price, performance, capacity, and availability. And file store multi-share gives them that option to go down as small as 10 gig. And again, thousands of pods have equal access to, to the data. So multi-share supports both regional, zonal, and basic? Uh, regional. Only. File store multi-share is based upon regional. So it's a regional offering, and, and that's, yes. So one of the things that we've been doing with block storage is replicating a lot of the capabilities that we've had on-premises for many years. Um, and this makes it, e this is one of the things that we want to provide easy, I'll let you take a picture if you want, uh, <laughs> effortless, easy uh, access to the data. Because one of the things that we've been providing customers the ability to do is choose a machine type, right? Is it uh, an N2, C2, whatever c configuration. And historically with persistent disk, there's been a volume that comes associated with that. And sometimes you need a different type of volume, greater capacity, more performance. You have to choose a different machine type. So you're not optimizing everything across both compute and storage. With Hyperdisk, and all three of these options, balance, throughput, and the extreme or, or GA today, you now have the option to turn different knobs based upon not only what the initial workload looks like and the initial machine type, but over time how it changes. So now you can have provision capacity, provision throughput, and provision IOPS, depending upon which one you're choosing, you may have all three. And this gives you that flexibility to choose your machine type, right size that as you need to for SQL Server licenses or Oracle licenses or whatever application license you want to optimize. But now you have the option to tune the storage appropriately. Okay. Storage pools is a concept that we also introduced. Uh, and uh, ironically, well, you know, ironically, but I was mentioning earlier, we did Tech Field Day 1 with Stephen at 3 part, and we focused on thin provisioning for on-premises storage. Everybody's familiar with thin provisioning on-premises, but we're bringing that to the cloud. And this is going to give you the ability to right-size it in two different ways, either through IOPS or capacity. And so now you can think about storage pools, just as a similar concept as thin provisioning on-premises. You, you have 100,000 IOPS, and now you can provision that across multiple volumes, and those volumes share that 100,000. Similarly, on the capacity and performance, you can see you don't have to provision for peak, as you have in the past, but now you can provision for an aggregate pool concept across multiple VMs. And this is one of the things that's unique to Google Cloud at this point, right? Yeah, so if I'm understanding this correctly, this now gives me, I didn't realize you could, uh, kind of pool IOPS. So if I have, uh, if I want to oversubscribe a service, whether it's running bare metal worker nodes or uh, bare metal hypervisors, and I'm oversubscribing 
my underlying resources, but I want to maintain like 150,000 IOPS consistently. I can now do that without paying for 150,000 IOPS times the number of nodes that I have. Correct. You can say if my if my average is 50,000, but I have bursts to 150, I can provision 200 across four hosts, and you provision to the average, watching that peak. And if you hit the peak, in you in six months, you turn the knob up. And storage pools is only a solution for Hyperdisk, or is it support file store? Uh, it is only a solution for Hyperdisk. Because with file store, you scale the capacity up and down as you need, as opposed to... Oh, it's to, automatic. Yes. You can, you can programmatically do that across not only file store for NFS, but also Google Cloud NetApp volumes. You can provision scale up and down. And even with net, within NetApp volumes, you can move from like the premium tier to extreme tier to move from like four and a half to 12 gigabytes per second dynamically and completely non-disruptively. So when am I choosing the NetApp servers, which is more or less native versus mm -hmm. the Google, Google's own servers? Yeah, so um, this is, a, so Net, Google Cloud NetApp volumes is now a Google managed service. Mm -hmm. And so it's one of those things you, you're, you don't have to worry about the cache hit ratio and everything uh, as you would for an on-premises filer. SMB workloads is the first, uh, because this is our managed SMB service that we have not had for a while, we introduced in August. Um, Depending on like NFS 4.1, some of those workloads, uh, file store NFS 4.1 is in preview now, but right now uh, NetApp has that in a fully supported mode. Uh, there are other options right now with Google Cloud NetApp volumes. You can actually replicate the data across multiple regions for regional availability. Uh, file store does not have that capability at this point. Um, so there are some features and functions, but if you think about like GKE workloads, it's mostly going to be file store with a CSI driver integration that we have. Um, if you're coming from on-premises and you're used to NetApp and you want to do that, uh, that's another reason you could do that. But again, it's, you're not going to have all the bells and whistles of the ONTAP APIs. You're going to have Terraform capabilities. You can provision backups and snapshots. A lot of the concepts are the same, where it leverages SnapMirror for uh, the data protection capabilities. But you're not going to have those those knobs to tune. So, so can I do replication, uh, ONTAP replication on-prem into that? Is that natively uh, onto Google Cloud? So if I either want to migrate or do DR, so right now, uh, for a migration, yes, from on-premises into Google Cloud, we do a one-time snap mirror migration. Uh, we are going to be supporting that more of a hybrid, uh, ongoing model. That's going to be that's next year. So. And then a backup and uh, for persistent disk, hyperdisk, and stuff is that automatic or is that something that's uh, a separate solution? Or okay, Ray, I'll give you the dollar after this slide here. Dollar because uh, <laughs> uh, it's I didn't get anything so. It, it sets us up well, right? We're, so this, we're good buds. You know? <laughs> so we, so this is a slide on NetApp and, and file store for different protection capabilities between, you know, you can see the options and trade-offs between cost and consequence of RPO and RTO and dollars. One of the things, and with and, Compute Engine, uh, to answer a raised question about Hyperdisk, we have a couple of different options um, to do backup of those block storage volumes. You can take snapshots of those storage volumes. I'm going to come to the snapshots in just a second. We have high availability, so if you're worried about zonal outages within a given region, you can use regional disks, or you can also do async replication uh, as well. One of the new things that we have is instant snapshots. And legacy naming, the old snapshots are actually backups, and the instant snapshots are what you would think of as snapshots, okay? Space optimized, instantaneous, rollback, the normal things you're used to. We now have that ability to have instant snapshots for Hyperdisk. So similar to a file system protection that we talked about before for snapshot cloning, replication, backup, same is available with Hyperdisk. Now we also have an orchestration across many of this that we're working on, but Google Cloud Backup and DR for SAP applications and databases, that's, a, that's higher level backup capability. But if you're looking at the storage protection capabilities, um, that's what I highlighted here. 